an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, docket number 15 9134, block 1227, lot 27. And this is for 203 through 209 West 79th Street in the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District. A group of four row houses originally built in 1896 to 97 and combined into one apartment building with a new modern style facade designed by Joseph Feingold in 1972 to 74. The application is to demolish the existing building and construct a new building. And this was heard July 22, 2014. Good morning, Commissioners. Corey Hrala, Preservation Staff. 203209 West 79th Street. Uh, this is a brief recap. It's on a lot consisting of four former row houses combined and altered into an apartment building uh, with a new front facade in the early 1970s. Uh, you can not really see it in this photo, but it's right here on the photo image on the bottom left. You'll see it in more detail later. It's adjacent to the Hotel Lucerne on the corner, seen here. Uh, and which is on the corner of West 79th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. The original proposal consisted of demolishing the existing building and constructing a new multi-story residential building with ground floor commercial, uh, with additional setback penthouse floors as well as mechanical enclosures. Uh, design featured an asymmetrical facade with recessed balconies and terracotta cladding. You're seeing that here in the middle, the balconies off to the west. Uh, you do not see the setbacks, but you'll see those again a little later in the presentation. The commissioners uh, were supportive of the proposal to demolish the existing building, but did ask the applicants to provide additional background information on the variety of buildings given the same style description in this particular historic district. The commissioners did not support the proposed bulk and massing of the new building as proposed at that time, and asked that it be reduced in height at the street wall and substantially reduced and simplified at the setback in deference to the hotel to serve. Well, the commissioners also expressed concerns about the asymmetrical composition of the proposed facade including the main entrance and recessed corner balconies, uh, which were both situated uh, at the very west of the, of the facade, as well as the relationship of the base of the building to the neighboring row houses uh, and the treatment of the lot line wall. Finally, the commissioners were concerned about a lack of depth and texture in the facade itself, uh, as well as the material and finished selections. Public testimony was submitted and it came from a variety of sources. Uh, City Council Member Helen Rosenthal, State Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal, President Gail Brewer, Landmarks West, Historic Districts Council, and members of the public, and general objected to several aspects of the proposal. The majority of the testimony focused on the large scale of the proposed building and its potential negative impact on the neighboring row houses, the Hotel Lucerne, and the streetscape in general. Features such as the recessed balconies, two story commercial base, and finished elections were also in question. Uh, so in response to, to both the public testimony and uh, commissioner's feedback, the team has returned with a fully revised proposal addressing each of the issues noted. We're seeing a sneak peek of, sneak peek of the uh, revised proposal here on the bottom right. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to Elise Quaysbar to begin the re-presentation. Thank you, Corey. We'll reopen the hearing. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Elise Quaysbar from Higgins Quaysbar. Um, uh, Corey gave you a, a brief overview of what happened um, at the last hearing and we'll uh, go through uh, more detail. Um, at the hearing in July, we went through the alteration history and um, uh, uh, sequ uh, alteration sequence of the building to establish um, uh, that in character, period, and style, it is not of the type and quality for which the historic district is designated and that it was appropriate to replace it with a new building. Um, to review, the existing building was made in, in 1972-74 by combining the four row houses that had previously ex existed on the site. The work entailed removing the facades, and they actually matched the ones next door. In the 1970s, they removed the facades and um, moved the street wall um, out to the, uh, the property line. Um, and uh, they reconfigured the interior with a new core, new plans to make a multiple dwelling with uh, commercial uh, stores on the ground floor. Commissioners understood that the features that had given the previous row houses their character were no longer extant and that uh, predated the historic district. However, in the discussion, you asked that we review some of the other buildings in the district that the designation recorded, at, or recorded as modern style to give context for this particular building. Um, there are two caveats. One, we didn't do any in-depth research on all of the buildings that um, fall into that category. 
And um, two, um, the analysis does not prejudge in any way what might be deemed appropriate in the future. Um, so it appears to us that the uh, modern style designation includes 47 buildings ranging in date from 1938 to 1987. And it appears to be a catch-all term for buildings from the uh, mid to late 20th century to, that did not rise to the level of distinct architectural quality um, that the district is designated for. We divided the buildings into two general categories reconstituted row houses, um, of which 207 West 79 is a part. They appear to be uh, mostly refaced buildings. Um, uh, either the, the, the facades were removed, like this one was, or they were completely refaced. Um, and uh, the replacement materials and facade arrangements mostly range um, from uh, distinctly banal to truly hideous. Um, and a few have evidence. <laughs> and I think this is just a sample of, um, of the buildings that uh, fall into this category. Um, there are a couple uh, that um, have some uh, evidence of effort in architectural uh, style, but this is really um, you know, an example of, of that. The second um, category are um, buildings that are called modern. They're different architectural um, types, building types, um, and, um, uh, and different architectural expressions. And some of them might have been given style designations, um, uh, but this is the other category. So the larger category is the one uh, that includes our building. Um, so uh, to go again to our site, this is it. I think we made the case on the very specific aspect of this particular building that um, it does not rise to the level of quality um, that the designation, or that the historic district was designated for. And most of the discussion really had to do with the design of the new building. Um, and I'd like to uh, just go to the, oh, here we are. Um, one of the things that, the, the, that really challenges the site and the new building really needs to address is the fact that um, we, have to, sorry, we have to mitigate um, between the uh, scale of the adjacent row houses and the scale of the adjacent lucerne. And um, in addition to that, there's a street wall um, difference because the existing building is coplanar with the lucerne and then it sits proud of the adjacent row houses, which makes uh, placing the building at the ground floor a little bit of a challenge to respect both of the historic uh, buildings. And um, I think this image shows very clearly how this really crowds that bowed uh, projection on the Clarence True uh, apartment building. Um, this uh, is the street elevation with the original proposal in it. Um, the uh, commissioners um, at that time uh, referred to the overall height as not being deferential to the Lucerne. It was quite a bit taller. Um, the sculpted form and setback um, uh, with the penthouses and the balconies um, uh, didn't really sit uh, comfortably with the uh, type of apartment building that is nearby, which were mostly the earlier uh, between the wars apartment buildings, which are much more of a street wall type. Um, there was a perceived lack of um, depth and texture in the design and, uh, and a lack of articulation on the west wall, which is this one here, and um, a need to uh, develop the strength of the top and the bottom of the design. Um, so I think that you'll find that the newly revised proposal um, really uh, very comfortably addresses all of those issues. In the um, and Morris Ajmi is the designer and architect. And we'll Thank, you. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Morris Ajmi. I think the biggest change is we originally, well, we reduced the height, and I'll go through all the changes um, in detail, but we went from an asymmetrical scheme to a symmetrical scheme, and I think that made a lot of difference. Um, part of the reason to do this asymmetrical design was to really try to address the difference in the building heights and the context. And I think we were able to do that in a different way. Um, and the building feels more comfortable, um, I think, in, in its position and relationship to the other buildings in the district. Um, 
So um, just in terms of the overall height, um, the building dropped about a little over 30 feet total um, uh, for the penthouse um, to the current penthouse height. And the um, height of the street wall um, dropped about 10 feet, and it's 18 feet below the height um, of the Lucerne, which you can see here. The Lucerne is 158 feet at the top of the, sorry, at the top of the cornice, and the, our a street wall is at 140. This used to be about 100, it was 189, so it's 32 feet, almost 32 feet of drop there. Um, so now this is exclusively a mechanical penthouse, uh, with the exception of a stair that goes from the apartment below up to the top. Um, and so I'll go through uh, some of the design changes. So as I said, it was a symmetrical design. The uh, entrance to the apartment building moved from the side to the center. Uh, we have two recesses that are set back two feet. These fin walls are set back two feet, um, both at, at the Lucerne and adjacent to the townhouses, uh, which I'll show you in plan. Um, and I think that really mitigates that um, the, the setback, which is about six feet total uh, for the, um, the townhouses from the um, property line. Um, and then uh, it's a uh, pretty clear tripartite um, organization or base, middle, and top. Um, and then we organize the base, which I'll show you later. The materials were, were changed um, to limestone at the base. It was terracotta brick. And we, um, adjusted the colors, which I think are happier and more cheerful. The other ones seem to be a little drab and I think were not well received. Um, and so we have uh, materials here. Uh, this gray limestone, um, uh, the terracotta, and the brick, which is shown as a wire cut brick. That's just for color. I actually have the sample. Um, it would be a smooth uh, brick. Just couldn't get a large uh, piece of that. Um, and then, um, and I'll go through this in detail, but just this piece is a 3D print of the, of the uh, terracotta panel, so pretty much full size, a portion of that. And this is shown in the three quarters of an inch setback um, of the um, uh, pattern. And, and, and the color for this will be? What? Would be this color. The, okay. That's, that's the color. Um, and I'll show you that um, okay. here. Um, here's a rendering. Uh, it's, it's difficult to tell the difference, which you'll see in elevation, but the, um, this core, this, the top of our corners is, is um, substantially below the Lucerne really allows that cornice to breathe now. Um, and the cornice sticks out about three feet, um, and this uh, uh, is about a foot and a half, which I'll show you um, as we go through the plant. So again, the base, the middle, and the top, and I have details for each one of those sections, um, and dimension all the details um, here. The stone blocks are about three feet wide uh, for the full blocks, probably about 15 inches. Are they uh, located, or is, that, is, is it it's just the, the way it's drawn? Is there like a reveal at the joints? Or? There's the, the butt joint that's just showing the, the, the location of those um, um, blocks. But it's, and then we have two setbacks at the entrance that are about nine inches. So we really wanted to accentuate the detail um, and the depth of the building. This is the slot that, uh, this is the uh, adjacent building, and this is the two foot um, setback. It's two feet eight wide, but it's setback two feet. So that really helps to accentuate the cornice at the top. and. Um, this uh, separation between the base and the middle of the building at that point. Um, and here's a detail showing that, which I think uh, really works much better than the previous design and also helps um, on the uh, loose surface side as well. Um, and then this is the center section. So we've grouped the windows um, to reflect what's happening in plan, which is similar to the, the sort of mid, uh, between the war apartment buildings, and um, those have the terracotta. Each, this is a living room and a living room, and then these are bedrooms, and so those uh, windows are separated by the uh, terracotta panels. Um, and then there's a uh, soldier course that runs across the facade and wraps around the side of the building as well, which we'll see in the, the, next, um, in the next rendering that we see. Um, and here's the top of the building, which shows the cornice, um, and that cornice wraps around and meets the, this wall that's set back two feet, so it's three feet. Uh, total projection from that face and about, uh, about 20 inches from the from the glass line. And that's, you can see it here. I think it's a little difficult to read on this drawing, but the string course does wrap around there. And then this is a new proposal for the windows, um, which I'll show you in a, in a pure elevation as well. Um, and then here's a, a detail showing um, 
terracotta panel, and then the two adjacent buildings and showing the, um, the decorative panels that you see on those buildings as well. And then um, a blow up of the window, these are casement windows, um, and the metal material is, is shown there. Um, so we, the windows are set back eight inches, and the uh, sill projects about two inches, or two inches, so it's a 10 inch step back from, from that. Um, and then some other decorative panels that we showed the last time, but as inspiration for the decorative panels that we we're showing now. So these are in the district. Um, these are the elevations. Um, this is the north elevation of the rear of the building um, with a similar uh, type of window. Uh, we articulate these as blind um, windows to maintain the pattern, um, and there are three little balconies um, at the top floor. Um, and then this is the side elevation that faces west which we just saw in the section. And these visibility, show, visibility um, studies show the, the, the reduction in the height. I think uh, Elise mentioned that folks are, um, this is more like a, a mid-block building, so you, we, we eliminated that pretty much completely, the stepping, um, and you can see the reduction there, and the, the, the reduction in the presence, and also the elimination of the balconies, which I think is a, an improvement there as well. And then these are before and after as well. Um, looking north, um, the previous design, the new design, you can see that it's just has a lot more breathing room at the top of the building. Um, and then this is looking south on Amsterdam. Um, again, um, this, we removed that and it really shows in that elevation. Um, and then we have an appendix of all the drawings and some additional plans. If So is that panel there the whole width? Is that panel sample? This is a portion of the panel. Because it's one foot what? One foot eight inches? Wide, so it's 20 inches. This, uh -huh. okay. So yes, it's, it's probably about that mm -hmm. wide. But this is the actual, this is showing the actual. Yeah, I was just, um, yeah, I got it. I just yeah. wondered yeah. what the real yeah. width was. Yeah. yeah that's, And the windows on the side go all the way down, or go how far? How far down do those windows? The windows on the that right there. These yes, windows. Those, uh -huh. uh, they don't go down to the ground. They're about 18 inches. I mean, because there's a building there, so they go. Yeah. Right oh, oh, just, sorry. Where do they go on the? Oh, I'm sorry. I there. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So they're about a floor mm -hmm. above the adjacent. Other questions for the applicant? Are there any other questions? I, I just am curious um, how we, how do you drive the pattern for the this different pattern for the terracotta? Um, it's based on William Morris wall. So we extracted that pattern and then abstracted it. did receive some testimony based on um, the recent changes. Uh, we received two letters from neighbors on 79th Street and 88th Street. We also received several emails. Uh, these are all mostly uh, still not in support of the project, but uh, opposing the project. We re received a letter from council member Helen Rosenthal. I'm just going to uh, just say a few things and have her enter that into the record that she is, uh, that I'm opposed to the revisions to the application to demolish the existing building and construct a new building. Not only is it still inappropriate in its appearance and height, but it's still uh, irreparably harmed to the unique character of the district. Uh, she notes that the wonderful view from the east, um, uh, sorry, the views from the east of the side of the Sir Hotel is one of the is gone, and uh, once again she notes that uh, the project should be uh, rejected outright. We've also received testimony from Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal. Uh, she believes that the nature and scope of the proposed construction will alter the central character of the neighborhood, and she remains extremely concerned over several aspects of the building, including the color treatment, the scale of Building, the glass and building and ground floor detail views, and she notes about the proposal of the block 
All right. Um, okay, we can go. Uh, if there are no other questions for the applicant, we can close the hearing. Um, all right, I think that there are many aspects to the changes that, uh, that are presented today uh, have addressed the concerns. I know I'm very pleased that the height of the building has gone down. I know to last time that I was concerned about the height. I had particular concerns about this building and how it relates to Lucerne. So I think the fact that it's lower and that the penthouse has been changed significantly does go towards that. Um, I think that the vocabulary that they've used in the facade of now being more symmetrical and the removal of uh, the balconies is also a significant change. Uh, I know a lot of us had concerns about the balcony. I myself felt that it was very, uh, just was not in character with, uh, the, with the historic districts and the elements that really make that and contribute to it. Um, in general, I would say that the proposal is much more in keeping in what uh, one uh, can consider appropriate for this district. Uh, other comments or questions or concerns? Any concerns? Oh. Uh, yes, uh, Adi. Michael, you go. No. Um, I, this it does not specifically have to do with this design, but I just want to say that of the images of the buildings that you showed, um, the, those constructed in the 40s and the 50s, um, the very plain facaded buildings, actually are, are important representatives of sort of very late international style, late Bauhaus sort of, you can say, even style, and that they're important aspects of, of the city. It, I mean, just because they don't have the other kind of decorative character, I mean, I'm sure you agree, are, are, are significant. And the buildings in the, constructed in the 60s and the 70s also don't, may not have exactly a stylistic quality or, um, or um, time period to which they refer, but they're, they also are kind of significant buildings in, in the kind of the, 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 the sense, the feeling of the Upper West Side, I think, especially. I'd, I'd love for you to say what, what you think about those. Well, um, it's, a, it's a very difficult topic, and I think that probably the, des or the uh, research department uh, grappled with this at the time that they designated the district. Um, and uh, I think when you have a district that has hundreds of buildings, um, some of them immediately pop out with stylistic uh, sure. uh, characteristics and you can plop a label on it right away. And then others um, you really have to struggle with. And I think that um, in this particular case, um, they used the modern style designation uh, to stop grappling. Um, and just uh, to put it in, I think there are some buildings in that grouping mm -hmm. that you could give a style designation to, um, but I was really trying to focus mostly on the uh, specifics of this application. Um, right, and, and then, then also just because that's what we did um, at the beginning, um, the existing building um, really doesn't have uh, the characteristics for which uh, the quality that the um, rest of the district does have. Even the designation report refers back to the 1970s and that kind of um, uh, treatment um, as a, a, a representation of um, a decline in uh, the uh, development of the neighborhood. And uh, I think the uh, yeah. point I wanted to add was that, um, first of all, I don't think that uh, the analysis that was presented today is in any way uh, trying to be comprehensive and sets any precedent for this commission if other app applications come before us that I have identified some of the buildings, whether it means that in all cases we are going to think that demolition is appropriate. So I just want to say that as well. It was uh, more 
uh, a response to a comment that I made that I just wanted to understand what are we talking about in terms of the district and the variety of buildings that it has. So for us today, it's really about the building that is in front of us, and I don't think our action is going to mean that we have to take the similar action in other cases. Everyone can be looked at at a case by base basis. There are some that definitely uh, evoke um, uh, periods that we may want to retain and others that we feel do not. Uh, so that's a general comment on this. Um, are there other questions for the applicant? Yes, or other comments that the commission would make? Yes. Uh, I just want to say that I think that um, I don't think there's any question for me that the, the um, decision to, to, to demolish these buildings, which have been significantly altered, is, is appropriate. I think that um, the, the building itself, I just can't imagine a, a building that is more uh, deferent and you know, appropriate in terms of scale and approach. It's a typical Upper West Side big block of apartment building. Um, I, I don't think that that's, I don't think that it can be I think it's very clear that it's it's it, you know it meets it meets the qualities of appropriateness for for me uh, for this district. I think the most interesting part of it perhaps is the is the, the the part that gives me a little bit of pause is this reveal at the at the two sides. I mean it's a very typical brownstone trick, right? To get the cornice to return, get the moldings to return, you create a little reveal on either side, and you have the moldings come back. To use it, I don't. I don't remember seeing it at a at a building of this size's size uh, ever, ever, ever having used that trick. But it's a good trick. Uh, but it, it does create. I think the one the one odd note for me is that it it breaks the street wall on on the Lucerne side and creates what will be a very noticeable shadow and reveal there. But I think that that's a a subtle enough move and it has other benefits on the other side where it does soften the transition to the townhouses that I think it's it's appropriate. I, I think that the, the try using trying to use decorative motifs to recall the Lucerne and other buildings is, is appropriate. The use of the color to try to blend with the townhouses. I mean, I think it's all uh, a pretty uh, straightforward Upper West Side building. All right, yes, uh, Roberto? Um, I think that for me, the, the um, changes that responded to comments about um, the height um, and about um, how they connected on the, on, on the streetscape um, and the elimination of the balconies on the corners, which I felt like really were not uh, typical for uh, the district um, and that actually drew attention away from what is the, the landmark building. Um, so I think that these things, that these changes make it appropriate. You know, I think that it works. And, and I can understand that there could still be issues about, you know, is there enough difference to the, um, to the hotel uh, next door? And is it, uh, but I think that there, I, I think that this is, you know, it can be, I guess, a question of choice here. But I think that it does make, enough of a, of a split. It, it's not, I mean, and it does have to do with the height and being set back and all of that, but I think it now works. Um, any other comments? Uh, I just want to, um, um, Again, um, I agree with uh, both my commissioners who've spoken today. I think one of the things uh, about uh, new buildings uh, in historic districts, as we noted before, you can get different kinds of responses, and we've seen that. Some are more bold and contemporary, some are more of a background building. I know that uh, since there was concerns about this building and how much deference it um, gives to the Lucerne, which stands at the corner and is an amazing building uh, with its uh, rich or ornamentation and features, uh, that a building with this palette, this height, uh, really does give more deference to it. I think when you go there, uh, that will still be the prominent building on the block, and I think that's something that um, I think the commission was concerned about in his response to it. And, and I would agree with the other commissioners that they have uh, incorporated details within this building that give more relief and shadow uh, and that provide depth to the facade 
and a palette which is uh, soft uh, but still uh, matches many of the uh, palettes of buildings along uh, West 79th Street. Yes. Sorry, one, one other question. W was there ever a consideration of pushing this behind the lot line to align with the townhouses and have the Lucerne forward? When we looked at the original design, we looked at setting a portion of the building back, mm -hmm. um, but it's a big move on the street, mm -hmm. and so we felt that that was too much to push it all the way back. Mm -hmm. Six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, if there are no other comments or questions, we, we can close the hearing then. Um, Roberta, would you like to read that into the record? Thank you. Okay. In the matter of 203-209 West 79th Street, Upper West Side, Central Park West Historic District, uh, application is to demolish the existing building and construct a new building. I recommend approval finding that the site has a history of major alterations to buildings over time, including the consolidation of multiple row houses and enlargement of the multiplied, multi, multiplied uh, buildings footprint to the property line, that the original historic fabric of the row house facades has been replaced with a unified modern facade with little architectural merit, and that therefore its demolition will not detract from the special historic and architectural character of the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District, that the design of the proposed new building is inspired by other similarly scaled apartment buildings and hotels found on this block and throughout the historic district, that the street wall height of the building will be consistent with the height of historic apartment buildings and hotels found in this historic district, including wider side streets such as West 79th Street and will be lower than and defer to the prominent upper corners of the hotel Lucerne, that the width of the building lot is compatible to the street frontages of many of the taller mid-block buildings, one block to the east on 79th Street. Therefore, this context supporting a taller building with proportions consistent with the topography as opposed to that of smaller scale mid-block buildings on narrow lots. That the primary plane of the proposed building's West 79th Street facade will align with the facade of the adjacent Hotel, hotel Lucerne, thereby reinforcing the street wall, a consistent feature of the streetscapes with larger adjoining, adjoining buildings. That the interaction between the proposed building and its disparate neighbors is resolved with the use of full height setbacks at both ends of the building and transitional elements. <clears throat> that the proposed building presents an articulated base, a uniformly patterned midsection and articulated cornice line, which is in keeping with the hierarchy of building forms found on the street and with the historic district. That the proportions and scale of the building space will maintain a commercial character at the street level that is consistent with the basis of historic apartment buildings and hotels found in this historic district, that the punched openings at the seven West 79th Street facade will recall the proportions and detailing of fenestration as similarly scaled historic buildings within this historic district, that the symmetrical entrance to the new building, which is articulated by a simple recessed round and surround and canopy, will evoke the grander entrances found at similarly scaled historic buildings in this historic district. That the configuration and operation of the proposed multi-light aluminum casement windows harmonize with the historic steel fenestration typically found at early to mid 20th century buildings within this historic district. That the detailing of the facade, which features an interplay of materials, flush and recessed planes, and smooth and textured surfaces uh, will provide a level of depth and articulation compatible to what is found on historic buildings within this historic district. That the materials palette of limestone terracotta and brick will harmonize with the materials and finishes of the facades found at the buildings on either side of the proposed building and found at other buildings in this historic district. That the light neutral colors of the terracotta, brick, and limestone will complement other light colored and warm toned masonry buildings found along West 79th Street within the historic district. That the continuous bands of brickwork and regular fenestration on the visible secondary facades 
common as with modestly decorative secondary facades found on historic buildings of this type within this historic district. That the neutral finishes of the brick cladding at the rooftop mechanical bulkhead will help these visible elements receive and view. That the proposed mechanical rooftop bulkhead will only be visible from vantage points over the building's secondary facades and will not overwhelm the building or the hotel, hotel discern in terms of a scale. That the massing at the top of, building, of the building relates to the classically inspired palazzo type apartment building found in this historic district and that the proposed building will enhance the architectural character of the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This application's been approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to say for the community, since no one actually mm -hmm. was able to speak here, mm -hmm. for the president, so should get everybody, mm -hmm. every elected representative, 